Hi guys, here is Thomas and I'd like to show you the current progress on my open source SLS 3D printer project. I want to show you how does it actually look like when I'm testing the printer. So, let's start. Once Raspbian has started, I can launch the Innova software. We are using Raspbian desktop just because it's convenient for testing purposes. We definitely plan to avoid it on later stages. And here is the current version of Innova's main menu. We are slowly adding new features as we are consolidating UI nowadays. But since not everything is being in place, you will also see in this video parts of our old testing UI. Amount of powder needed for the print job is one of these features which haven't been implemented yet but it's quite easy to calculate it manually. You just have to take into account that it's not about the number of layers of the print, but you also need some powder for the print preparation at the beginning and print cap at the end. For this test print it's something around 40 mm. I've been using nylon PA12 for all my test prints so far. This one is actually 100 virgin powder, but I've already tested the ratio 70% used and 30% fresh. This is just a simple 3D printed tool I created to press and flatten powder in the chambers. Since I am not experienced in this, it took me a few minutes, but it was not a big problem. I believe I will find effective system of filling the printer in the future and it will be much easier then. After I fill the printer with the power roughly, I run the automated feature for making final surface finish. We call it begin layer because it's called at the beginning of each layer before the sintering. And that's it, I'm ready for next steps. If you like this project and don't want to miss anything, please subscribe. Since the printer is filled with powder, I can start a preheating procedure. On this testing UI, you can see the list of all controlled heating elements. Three temperature targets need to be set. First one, set to 140 degrees Celsius, is for the print and powder chamber. Another figure is the threshold when the halogen heaters will switch on. And finally, there is 140 degrees Celsius target for the bed surface for Halgens. It took around 20 minutes to reach 140 in chambers, another 10 minutes when the surface will start to heat, but in total it's about 75 minutes to have uniformly preheated printer. This is the thermal camera view showing the matrix of temperatures across the print bed. I am using the video cam for visual control of what's going on inside the printer. You can simply see the halogen temps regulation loop through the changes in intensity of light inside of printer. During the printer preheating I had a time to set up print profile for today's test. It is possible to preset and save different print profiles for different powders, powder ratios, etc. We have also developed features allowing to change simply the print chamber size and its shape. And we are again in our old testing UI. Because the purpose of my testing is to find the right print profile, I will not make nesting here as it would be expected. I will just place one big object into the middle of the chamber which consists of separate objects. 
That's because of I need to be sure about the positions of particular objects to be able to analyze prints afterwards. Taken into account that all these 3D operations are being done on Raspberry Pi, I think it performs quite well. Here you can see the content of the chamber in a bit more detail. Slicing itself is really simple. You will just add how many layers you want to slice and then it's just one click procedure. In the top right corner you can see it took something around 18 seconds. Now I'm just clicking to show you all the 121 layers. Printer is preheated, print profile set up, objects nested, so there is nothing to block printing. The only thing needed now is to select the right print profile. Print has started and I'm now on the printer status page which contains all the informations relevant to the print. You can see here file name, uh, progress status, remaining time, all the temperatures, positions and so on. You can also cancel the print from here if needed. First automatically controlled part of the printing operation is print bed preparation. This is about the preheating the powder print bed to minimize probability of warping and curling of first layers of the print. In the live view you can see how layer by layer is lied down and preheated to 174 degrees Celsius. After 79 bit preparation layers, I'm just one layer before sintering start. And sintering started. Outline first, then infill. This was the real-time capture of how long does it take to center one layer of this test print. You can also control the printer sintering process from the printer status page. It's the black rectangle on the bottom right corner which represents print bed. After 119 layers we are just two layers before print ends. Immediately after that, print caps layers are lie down to prevent print from warping. Since print cap was set for 5 mm, it will be 40 layers in total. Last part of the print job is control cooling. It's really the important part of the print job because you don't want to have uncontrolled amount of shrinkage in your objects. 
It controls the temperature of the print bed, print chamber sides as well as the print bed surface. Once printer cooled down, we can open it and see what happened inside. An archaeology work can start. I haven't done yet the tools for removing powder cake, but it's not a problem because there is just a few objects in the print chamber. I'm using nylon brush to clean all the parts from the surrounding powder. Afterwards I use the compress air to finish it. And after a few minutes cleaning is finished. This video showed one of the three print tests I did. I tried to precisely analyze the print outputs after the each test. Then I change the print settings accordingly and try to achieve better print quality. So let's look on that. This is the output of the first print test. I used the non-branded Chinese powder, which was 100% virgin. But as you can see in the Z-axis, the surfaces are really rough. It's even better visible on these testing cubes, which consists of fillets, chamfers and holes. This surface finish problem relates to huge over-sintering, which is given by high bed temperature and high laser density. And this is the test print where I reduce these parameters to see what happened. As you can clearly see, the Z-axis surfaces are now much better. It's nicely visible on this side-by-side -side comparison. And the same situation is with test cubes. There were also four benches as a part of this test print. It's for just the fun whether I will be able to print them out. These are just 30% of regular bench size. Despite the print quality is not good, I was really happy to print them. And finally third print test is here. In this test print I focused mainly on Z1 and Z2 speeds and also on the recoder speed. The reason for that was that I was still seeing layer shifts in previous attempts. This was also the first one where I didn't use the Chinese powder, but I used the branded Formlabs powder instead. Therefore you can see here just first 40 layers of the print, because I didn't want to waste too much powder in case of print failure. And finally is here the comparison of all three prints. So that's it, I'm quite satisfied with the progress of the print quality during my tests. But I still have a lot of to do, mainly because I think I'm quite near to the mechanical limits of this prototype. Therefore, I've already been working on the next version where I hope all these child diseases disappear. So stay tuned.